vectors and random matrices. Thank you very much. And I'm very grateful for inviting me and letting me to talk here. So the, uh, these talks will be about uh, delocalization. So let me first formulate what this phenomenon is. Let's take two model cases. Uh, before I uh, discuss it, uh, let me briefly describe the, uh, the plan of these lectures. We will shortly talk about uh, the localization in general. And then we will concentrate on one particular manifestation of this phenomenon on no gaps delocalization. And in the first lecture, we'll see how, uh, what can we do with the uh, standard, the most robust method, the epsilon net argument, and what we cannot do with this argument. And then uh, the, we are going to step a bit away from a random matrix theory and talk about random vectors and develop strong, small, all probability estimates for random vectors. And uh, these estimates will be instrumental in proving no gaps delocalization, which I hopefully will do in lecture three. And the final lecture will be about the application of different types of delocalizations to uh, random graphs. So let me start with what delocalization is, and let's start with uh, two toy examples. One is G O. E, and uh, the second one will be Ginebra Ensemble. So the first one is uh, uh, Gaussian ID matrices, which are Hermitian real ID uh, matrices, which are Hermitian. And in the second one, let's consider complex Gaussian ID ma matrices, which with full independent on Hermitian. And we will assume that the real part of the matrix is independent of the imaginary part. So the, first, uh, the distribution of the first ensemble is invariant. And the orthogonal group. And if we consider an eigen, a unit eigenvector, then an eigenvector being a function of a matrix should share the same invariance properties. So an eigenvector will be, uh, the distribution of the eigenvector will be invariant under the action of the orthogonal group, which means that any eigenvector is uniformly distributed on 
the unit sphere, and the unit sphere in this case is real. Okay, and if we look at the complex non-Hermitian analog, the Ginebra ensemble, this distribution will be also invariant, this time under the unitary group, and again, this causes the distribution of any eigenvector to be invariant on the unit sphere, and the unit sphere now is complex. We'll see that there is a significant difference between these examples later. Okay. But the, uh, here we used invariance. If uh, we have random matrices, say Hermitian random matrices, or just full independent case, but the entries are not normal, we cannot hope for any invariance. In particular, if the distribution is discrete, the eigenvectors will take uh, values in a discrete set, so no invariance is possible. But if we believe in a universality phenomenon, as n goes large, we have to approach the uniform distribution on the sphere. And this uh, vague idea is delocalization. So an eigenvector of a reasonable class of random matrices is distributed roughly uniformly on the sphere. And there are many different ways to quantify this vague uh, idea. For example, one can uh, take a few coordinates of an eigenvector, and as the size of the matrix approaches infinity, uh, these, uh, the joint distribution of these coordinates will uh, tend to the distribution of the standard uh, Gaussian vector. This was proved by Bourgard and Yao in the case of random Hermitian matrices. But we will take a different point of view. Uh, in this uh, point of view, first, the, uh, one takes the limit as n approaches to infinity, which is a standard idea of random matrices. And second, one fixes the set of coordinates in advance. What we are going to do uh, is we, we will consider matrices of fixed size. The size is huge but fixed. And we, we will strive for explicit probabilities estimate. A probability estimate, we will want to get bounds with high probability. And the, the probability should be as high as we can get. The reason uh, lies in applications. For example, random matrices arise uh, in computer science uh, in uh, many different numeric linear algebra algorithms. And if you solve a linear system or a linear programming problem, you cannot let the size of the matrix tend to infinity. And you want to have explicit probabilistic guarantees that your algorithm will work. So, We'll first uh, we'll ap approach this question non-asymptotically, which means that we fix a large n. And second, we will strive to get estimates which are not local, which uh, are not, do not hold for a fixed number of coordinates, but which reflect the global structure. And the most standard approach here is uh, the L infinity the localization and to describe it let's first look at these two examples so uh, if i take a random vector uniformly distributed on over the sphere no, it doesn't matter real or complex it cannot have large coordinates it should not be aligned with any coordinate axis and uh, actually, the maximal of uh, uh, coordinate 
should be rather small. It's easy to see if uh, we have V uniformly distributed over the sphere, then this vector can be modeled. It has the same distribution as one over the norm of the standard Gaussian vector uh, as a normalized standard Gaussian vector. And then this norm, this Euclidean norm is strongly concentrated about square root of n. And so finding the L infinity norm of the uniform vector over the sphere reduces to finding the maximum of n independent normal random variables, which is a probability 101 problem. So with high probability, we will have that the L infinity norm of a random vector uniformly distributed over the sphere is O capital of square root log n over square root of n. Okay. And then we would expect the same phenomena to hold for the matrices with independent entries. And this indeed was proved rather recently, first uh, uh, by, uh, uh, before I formulate the results, uh, let me formulate the assumption. The assumption is that the entries of the matrix will have light tails. And by light tails, I mean that the probability that absolute value of a i j is greater than t is less or equal than, say, two exponential of negative uh, uh, t over k to the power alpha for some alpha greater than zero, and this holds for any t positive. So in this talk, uh, k and c capital c small, etc., will denote absolute constants. And if we have such light, light tails, uh, the tails of exponential type, and if in addition I assume, say, that the entries are centered and of unit variance, then in the Hermitian model, Erdős, Schlein, and Yao proved that uh, for any, uh, that with high probability, the L infinity norm of any eigenvector in the bulk is bounded by C uh, log n to the power beta over square root of n. So we have the same phenomenon, the same delocalization as in the GOE case. And moreover, uh, uh, the probability can be adjusted, so the probability that this event occurs is greater or equal than, uh, than 1 minus n to the negative t if I allow the constant c to depend on t. So uh, I can choose any power probability, uh, any power type probability by allowing a greater uh, constant here. And in particular, this would allow to run Borel-Cantelli. Beta is anything bigger than a half? Uh, beta is a number depending 
on alpha and in the most, probably the most important case, when alpha equals two, the, such variables are called sub-Gaussian, uh, Erdeschlein and Yao got beta of two to be nine halves, but uh, very recently, and Guyen and Wu improved this to uh, the optimal bound, uh, beta of two to be one half, which perfectly matches the GOE case. If we look at the Ginebra ensemble, there is the same statement uh, for, uh, sorry, for any uh, t greater than one, uh, there, uh, there is precisely the same statement. It uh, was uh, proved uh, a couple of years ago jointly with Vershinin. And uh, in this case, beta of two was by some random reason uh, the same nine over two, although I don't claim that this bound is optimal in any way. Actually, there are, uh, uh, there are explicit known ways how to improve this nine, uh, nine halves. So what the L infinity delocalization tells us is that if you consider the distribution of mass of an eigenvector, you can, uh, you can rule out peaks. So, uh, in particular, this this is not an eigenvector with high probability. We do, uh, do not allow uh, large coordinates. But what we haven't ruled out is the chasms in the mass distribution. So here I consider coordinates from 1 to n, and the, uh, the ordinates are the absolute values of vj. We ruled out the large coordinates, and we haven't ruled out the small coordinates, but if we consider a random vector uniformly distributed over the sphere, again, doesn't matter, real or complex, it must have uh, relatively large coordinates. We cannot assume that it is completely flat. There will be some deterioration. Again, we can analyze the model of the normalized Gaussian vector. But any set of If I consider any set of size epsilon n, it must carry a mass which would depend only on epsilon. And here, the normalization will be epsilon n. Uh, the, idea comes that we model the rather eigenvector of a random matrix models an eigenfunction, and an eigenfunction cannot be a zero on the set of large measure. The measure here is normalized counting measure on the, on the set one, et cetera, n. So the measure is epsilon, the size is epsilon n. This brings us to no gaps delocalization, which is the statement that with high probability, any uh, set I of coordinates carries a 
non-negligible mass. So the, if I take the eigenvector and consider only coordinates belonging to I, then this is greater or equal than some function phi of epsilon. Okay. And this, establishing this fact will be uh, the main topic of the first three lectures. So uh, before I proceed, let's fix the modal. And we want to inc uh, incorporate as many different modals as possible. We want to incorporate both Hermitian and non-Hermitian matrices. So let's make assumptions which are maximally general. And first, let me make an assumption about independence. Any entry A i j is independent of the other entries except Possibly A J I. So this in, uh, encompasses Hermitian ensembles, full IID ensembles, skew Hermitian matrices, etc. The second uh, assumption looks a little less natural, but let me formulate it, uh, it, and then I'll comment on it. So the real part of AIJ is random. The imaginary part is deterministic. This looks a little artificial, but it is uh, assumed to in include two most important cases. First, the real random matrices, in which case I can take the imaginary part being zeros. And second, the complex random matrices with real and in imaginary part independent. Then if I condition on the imaginary parts, I'll reduce it to this modal. And if I prove the, uh, the no gaps delocalization conditionally, I can then remove the conditioning by taking expectation of the, of, uh, the imaginary part. Okay. And then we'll have two results for two models. First, let me formulate a simpler one for the matrices with uh, absolutely continuous uh, entries of bounded density. Again, before I do it, let me introduce one event. Let's take the, uh, let's take M to be a positive number and introduce the event B A M. Is, is that the norm of A is less or equal than M square root of N? This will be a likely event uh, if the matrix. Uh, 
has uniformly bounded fourth moments, say, then the event BAM occurs with high probability. And so first, let me formulate the first theorem joined with Varshinin. So I'll assume that A satisfies one and two, these assumptions on the right board, and also assume that the density of A I J is less or equal than some constant K and Then, for any epsilon greater or equal than 8 over n, and any s positive with probability at least one minus Cs to the power epsilon m minus the probability of the complement of this event Bam, any unit eigenvector And for any set I of coordinates, of size epsilon n, the norm, the mass carried by these coordinates is at least epsilon uh, sorry, epsilon s to the sixth power. So let's see what we have. First of all, let's take s to be a small constant. Then this probability is exponential in epsilon n, and this is the optimal bound, and this is a small for a probability for any reasonable matrix ensemble. And then, if I take at least eight coordinate, any eight coordinates of an eigenvector, then these coordinates carry a mass which is polynomial in epsilon. Uh, no, for any n. Okay. Uh, one interesting feature of this result is how the nor uh, how the uh, more tails of the matrix enter the picture. They almost uh, not appear here. I even do not assume that the uh, entries have an expectation. The only way they enter it is that we want to say that 
the norm of the matrix is small with a reasonable probability. And this is the bounded density case, but let's consider a more general case where we want to drop this bounded density assumption and we want to drop all the assumptions on the distribution of entries. Of course, we cannot drop all of them, otherwise the matrix would be deterministic. But let's reduce the assumptions to bare minimum. And then there is another so theorem to also. Another question. Yes. Uh, C would depend only on K. Okay, again, uh, joint with Vrashinin. So, again, I assume that A satisfies one and Two, and also assume that for any Z complex, uh, the probability that absolute value of A i J minus Z is less than C1 is less than C2, where C2 is a constant less than 1. This is a minimal assumption I can put that the entries do not fall entirely into a small disk around C. Then, If I call this star, star holds. But in this full generality, we're not able to, uh, to get down for uh, to eight, uh, eight coordinates. The number of coordinates will be reason a relatively big holds for any s relatively large greater or equal than epsilon to the negative uh, seven sixes and to the negative one six plus e to the negative C over square root of epsilon. Okay. And this condition.